Hey there! Welcome back to another episode of Mr. Larry. It's Friday, it's Black History Month, and I'm so excited to share a brand new project with you from start to finish. Featuring embroidery. You may have some familiarity with embroidery in one way or another. And we've covered a few projects that feel very similar, including counted cross stitch and needlepoint. Today, we'll look at some basics of embroidery that can get you started on your next piece of home decor. Plus, I'm doing it with some help from a very special friend, so stay tuned. I haven't shared a full-size episode of Mr. Larry with you all in a while because Honestly, I've just been taking a little break to plan and prepare for the next series of Mr. Larry, Series 4. And if you would personally like to help bring Mr. Larry Series 4 to life, stay tuned for my Kickstarter campaign, which will start in just about a week or so. Before we get started, I want to thank you for hanging out today. And if you are new here, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me over on Instagram and TikTok at Mr.Larry for even more crafty content. Okay, okay, okay. It's time to get into today's project, and I've got three things to help us get started, beginning with thing number one. Simply put, embroidery is the art of decorating fabric with thread or yarn using a needle. Hand-stitched embroidery can be traced back to the year 30,000 BCE, with origins in China and the Near East. It made its way through the Viking Age and grew in a huge way in Europe around the year 1000. Everything from garments to tapestries, tablecloths, and more were embellished with embroidery as a symbol of status and wealth. The 1800s saw embroidery become a pastime for young women, specifically as a way to pass young girls into womanhood like some kind of crafty SAT test. Which brings us to thing number two. As with many things, the 1900s and the 20th century saw publications, technologies, and cultural shifts make embroidery significantly more widespread. Not only was it appreciated by people of all classes and statuses, but now it could be performed by hand or machine. While the style and technique of embroidery may have changed over the years, the general use and purpose of it has remained the same. Simply put, it remains a popular method for decorating one's home and oneself with motifs and symbols and even brand elements like logos. Modern embroidery can be beautiful or irreverent, classic or contemporary, or any combination of the above. Not to mention, supplies are available pretty much everywhere and on the cheap. Which brings us to thing number three. If we're talking about fiber supplies, then we gotta talk about my homegirl sister friend, Busy Peach. Busy Peach, AKA Laverne, is a fibers artist who is no stranger to embroidery, crochet, knitting, amigurumi, basically all the stuff that I'm like usually scared to attempt to myself. <laughs> She produces beautiful, luxury-dyed, plant-based fiber, as well as project kits, journals, plus she sent me some materials in my favorite colors, so how could I possibly say no to a collaboration? Be sure to follow Busy Peach on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook, and be sure to check out her shop and her theme song, like... I'll link everything down below in the description for you all. Laverne, thank you so much for initiating this lovely collaboration um, and wish me good luck. <laughs> so for today's project, you're gonna need a few skeins, skeins, skeins. You're gonna need a few skeins of your favorite colored fiber. Um, you can start with something like DCM, DMC, DMC which is available at pretty much every craft store you know, or you could simply hop on over to Busy Peach's site and pick up one of her kits. These are plant-based fibers, which are good for the environment. And of course, by purchasing from Busy Peach, you are supporting a small black business, which is always a good idea. I'm gonna share three basic embroidery stitches that should be plenty to get your gears going. So get comfortable and let's get started. Here is my collection of materials. We're starting out with some Busy Peach materials. Now this is her Cupro skeins. Cupro is a cellulose or plant-based fiber. You can also use some DMC that you can purchase at pretty much any craft store. It's the same stuff we use for friendship bracelets. The next thing that we will need is some fabric. Again, this is a space where you can select a color, 
if you like, or you could go with something neutral. I'm actually planning to do a little bit of all of the above. I like to use a sturdier fabric. I like that it gives me just a little bit more stability than a thinner fabric might, especially as I'm starting out. Next, we will need a hoop to use. You can find these in a variety of materials and different sizes. This is a plastic and rubber hoop. So the outer ring is this rubber thing that looks like wood, which I really love. And they just have a really nice, elegant finish. Most of your hoops are gonna come with this same kind of tightening mechanism. You simply turn this screw to tighten the hoop and turn it the opposite direction to loosen it. You will also need some embroidery needles. These needles come in a multi-pack, which means I have a few different sizes I can choose from. You'll note that the tip is pointed, just like a sewing needle, but the eye is just a bit larger to allow for more threads of your floss to go through. We typically will embroider with multiple threads at a time to give you the bulk and weight that you need for your stitches to really come to life on your fabric. You may also want to find a water-soluble marking pencil. This is something that I use for sewing a lot, and I could use it to sketch a design onto my fabric and then embroider with those lines in mind. Or you could just freehand it like I will probably do with some of my project today. I'm gonna to start by loading my fabric into the hoop, and I'll show you exactly how I do that. I'm gonna start by pressing my fabric. Y'all know I like using starch because I'm a starch queen. So, you know, I, I, I just need that critchy crunchy <laughs> for this kind of project. I think the stiffness makes a stiffer fabric even more forgiving as opposed to using a thinner fabric. I'm gonna use this larger hoop so that it will be easier for you all to see what I'm doing. For this kind of little rubber hoop, I'm just gonna pull the rubber ring off. I'm gonna place this under my fabric. Make sure I give myself enough space from the selvage if need be. And I'm just gonna gently stretch this back over that plastic ring. Um, and then once you have that ring back on, all I'm doing here is just sort of gently pulling it away from the plastic ring to make sure that it has even tension all around the sides. And eventually we will trim all of this. I'm gonna keep it for now because it's great for gripping onto your project as you work. Cool. So I have selected a couple of different colors of the DMC floss. And I also have a few of the flosses that I got from Busy Peach that I will be incorporating. And once you get the skein unwound and everything, you'll have this. Uh, this is a bit thinner and it comes in a six ply. And most people will use it just like this. So the first thing I need to do is thread this needle. I always find that just a little moisture will help you to twist that into a point if you need to, if you're doing this by hand. You know, is it sanitary? Don't ask me that. So I am going to use this doubled over and I want to keep the length of thread that I'm using to about 16 inches or less. And I'm going to tie a knot on the end. Oh yeah, something like that should be good. I'm gonna start with just a basic running stitch. This is going to give you this sort of really traditional looking stitch pattern. So I'm going to go from the back side and I'm just going to use my sense of sight and feel to sort of poke through the fabric until I get into the right place. And there we go. I want to slowly pull this through so that I don't get any tangles. Now this running stitch is really easy. You're just going to go under, over, under, over. You want to make sure that you keep your distances consistent. And the longer your thread is, you want to pull sl more slowly so that you don't get any tangles and knots in there. It's really easy to do that just from pulling too quickly. So I'm going to continue the same amount of space over using the line that I've drawn and come out the front side. And then skip the same size gap. 
Now this is the sort of really basic stitch that you might learn when you're learning how to sew. You may have done this as a child in a classroom setting even. Um, and it's just something that's sort of a part of many different crafting cultures. <laughs> so I'm gonna continue this border with our running stitch. Wow. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. Okay, so now that I'm done with this, I am going to weave this needle through some of these stitches. I wanna make sure that my tension doesn't get crazy. I don't wanna to tug too hard or anything um, because that will impact the look of the stitches on the front. So now I have tied that back in. I'm just gonna snip my needle out and then I'll leave it like that. Isn't that cute? So that's my running stitch, because it's just like running through. Now I'm gonna show you another variation on one of our basic bordering stitches, and we're just gonna place it right on the inside. I'm not even gonna draw a guide for it. I'm just gonna use the stitches that we have here as our guide, but I am gonna switch colors to this bright, vibrant red DMC floss. So again, from the back side. And like I mentioned, I'm just gonna follow the frame of this, these stitches that we've made already. We've pulled our thread through. I'm gonna make myself a small loop and then go back down through or just next to that same hole. Remember to hold that little loop down. From here, I'm gonna use my finger through the back side to tip the needle up through the fabric again and over my threads there on that little loop I've just made. I just use my finger to bloop and then the needle has enough space to go through the fabric again. From here, I'm gonna pull very gently since I'm using so many threads to come through this side. Down through that hole I'm gonna tap, I'm gonna push up a little bit, come back out again, make sure my tail is on, there's underneath the needle. And then pull it all back. This is really difficult to film y'all, I just have to say. <laughs> so I'm gonna just take my needle, place it in the same hole I just left or at the top of that loop. I'm pressing from below on top of the needle, like that. Um, and then I'm just pressing it into this fabric just enough so that it pops up a little bit. I pull my thread down so that I can make sure that my needle goes above it. And that's how I get my loop. I'm just gonna continue that all the way around. This is a great stitch for doing names or words or uh, vines, um, plant stems, anything like that. <laughs> y'all, this is so precious and the stitch is not perfect, but it is beautiful. And just imagine what like a little bit of practice could do. Just a note, I'm not going through the fabric at all. I'm just wrapping this under and between some of the previous stitches so that when I do clip the end, it doesn't unravel easily. Let's try some French knots. Now I've already gotten this little piece started. I'm just gonna finish filling in this side with some more of my Busy Peach um, Cupro, which is so soft. It just, it feels silky smooth. It's really beautiful. So, a French knot, what on earth is that? Well, it's just a knot that you make with your thread. Um, here's an example that I shared on Instagram a little bit ago. I'm gonna make this guy out here on its own.
so far so good. Now I'm going to take my needle and my thread near the surface of the fabric and I just want to wrap it around the needle three or four times. For this size I've been using three times and you see I've got my little my little wrap there and if you pull your needle either toward you or away from you you see that that little bit of thread there wraps around with it. I want to pull that close to the fabric and then put my needle near the original hole and then pull it all the way through. So from here, I will just continue to fill these in. Um, I'll go a little bit more wide first, and then I'll go in and fill in gaps as I need to. Now once you get going on these, you can get faster at them, but even when you are feeling good, I recommend taking your time because these little knots are easy to create a little mess with if you pull too quickly or um, aren't paying attention to the placement of your knot. So, you know, French knot, they have a fancy name and they can look really fancy, but they really don't require a whole lot of skill beyond just practice. The more you practice different stitches and techniques, the more creative you can be. The last thing we need to do to finish our piece is to trim off the excess. And the easiest way to do that is just to take a very sharp pair of scissors and holding your fabric upwards, I just go around with my scissors resting against the edge of the hoop and trim it that way. Then I'll go back in and clean up any frayed edges or anything that you can see from the front. And that will be sufficient for my uses, which is just gonna be hanging this on a wall. So anything that like isn't seen from that side, I'm good to go. Simple. This part is really fun because it sort of like makes your work finished if you ask me. Because then you get to see it without all the excess and stuff and it can be a magical moment. And it can make your work look maybe better than you thought it did. Because <laughs> we gonna need a miracle for somebody. Well, we made it through yet another episode and we have some really beautiful, well, <laughs> we have some lovely pieces uh, to show for it. This is my first foray into this kind of embroidery. So I'm proud of what I've done, but I'm even more excited about what can come next with a little bit more practice, especially as we learn more stitches and different techniques. We didn't even get to the satin stitch. So you can bet that there's definitely gonna be a second episode dedicated to embroidery in series four of Mr. Larry. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and follow me on Instagram and TikTok so that you can see when more things are happening and you can see my progress as I continue this embroidery stuff. And of course, you can share your work with me there as well. I wanna send a big thank you to Busy Peach for sending me supplies for today's episode. And of course, make sure you go and follow her. I'm excited to see where my embroidery journey goes and I'm gonna bring y'all with me like I always do. That's it, that's the, that's the episode, that's. Stay safe, stay crafty, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.